Suswagatam, here I am back in conversation with you to talk about something different, about the world of attire and how we connect that with music. Of course, all of you know that I wear only Pattu, Kanchipuram Pattu, saris for my concerts. And um, I might say that it is a thought or a trend that I carried forward from my guru, Padma Bhushan, Dr. M. L. Vasantakumari Amma. I always used to admire the way she used to drape herself in Patisaris. When it was a concert, when it was presenting herself on stage, she was a totally different personality from what I would see at home. She also used to speak about that aspect. She would say that, you know, people watch you for over two hours or three hours in the auditorium and hence you should be well dressed, you know, not overly dressed, uh, not too flamboyant, not too opulent, but decently, smartly, uh, majestically dressed. So I took it upon myself to carry this legacy forward and I did find that along the way I acquired a lot of appreciation for my selection of saris and the way I attired myself on stage. As we move along in life, we get some different kind of opportunities apart from what we do as our profession. And this was one that came by in 2007. I had an offer from a brand that deals with Patisaris asking me if I would be interested in wearing their saris and doing their ad for Kanchi Parampattu saris. The line was going to be titled as the line of saris was titled as Parampara and they said they were looking for a face that was involved in tradition that was involved in a profession that was steeped deeply in tradition. I was not certain whether I would fit into that role, nor was I certain whether I should be able to rise up to that point of doing an ad. Why I say rise up is because doing an ad involves a lot of other aspects different from what I am involved in while singing. This requires presentation, but in a different way. This requires a few days of hard work, but different from what I experience while performing. And hence, I said that I would reply to them in a few days. My husband Raghunathan and I spoke uh, for a few hours about it. Uh, Raghu had a very valid point. He said, Ni pandrathu, uh, panna poradhu, ni pandrathukku uh, you always wear a party sari. You sit and perform on stage. They're going to probably use you in the same dimension. So why don't you dabble into something that is new and bring in some freshness into your profession? He also added another valuable point. He said, I'm sure this ad would reach a lot of people beyond the group that comes to your concert to listen to music. They would want to know who this is and then once they know that you are involved in Carnatic music, the next thing will be listen to your music. And once they listen to your music, if they are impressed, which they would be, they would come into your concert. These were precisely his words and I found logic and reason in that. And I said, okay, I'm going to try out something different and we said yes to Pothis. And we had several sessions of the ad happening. The very first time, believe me, I was nervous. I was very self-conscious. You know, the way I sat, the way I moved, the way I spoke, uh, even the ease in the body language seemed a little restrained and constrained. Because, you know, cameras are facing you, people are instructing you, you need to listen to them. Uh, there's a lot of things happening at the same time. And yet, you have to pretend nothing is happening and look happy and blissful 
on the camera. When I said yes and we had the first shoot and the first stills were out, that was a time when they had very large hoardings. And I still remember the very first hoarding that was near the central railway station. Huge image of me uh, in three uh, different colors of saris. And of course, we had a lot of feedback. Much of it was positive. A little bit, little bit of negative feedback saying, uh, again, do I need to be doing this? Uh, do, can I play the role of a model while uh, being steeped uh, in a profession that is uh, adhering to tradition and a kind of a, a conservative profession? The objective, as I said earlier in a few words, was to reach out to a crowd, uh, to an audience that does not really come into music concerts or does not even listen to Carnatic music. I did touch a lot of people and I realized that a lot more people came to experience my music in concerts and I felt a small victory in that because we always talk about Carnatic music or the classical arts reaching out to a niche audience and why don't we think of inclusivity? This was my little way of making audience inclusive into my concerts. A lot of people who uh, never came for my concerts did come into my concerts, started buying my CDs, uh, writing to me on email, uh, letting me know that this was a new world that they had entered, a new realm where they felt that the music had a direct connect with divinity and they were happy and grateful that I had introduced them to this. As I mentioned, doing an ad requires a lot of effort but uh, I felt it was good doing it because it was like two days in six months. It just involved two days of my time in a span of six months. And we had fun, of course, because uh, we had a group of people who were like-minded, who liked music, who already were listening to my music. I think we had uh, four or five sessions. Uh, one or two were videos and the others were still ads. Uh, when I speak about the video shoot, I still remember my experience uh, at the Adirapalli falls. It was challenging because uh, you had to sit by the falls and the falls came in with great vigor. In fact, even the director Babu Shankar, he said he was not coming up to the point uh, because he had a vertigo. He said, you have to go and sit there and in the background you have the falls coming down. And it was at great height. If you look down, it was quite, uh, I really don't know the height, but it was quite steep. And the real challenge lay in the fact that I had to hold a tambura at that point. It was walking up the hills and um, a certain height and then I had to walk up on the rock to the point where they had set up everything. And uh, I sat with the tambura and there was a particular line that I was asked to sing for the ad and I had to sing that, play the tambura present myself uh, kind of pleasant on the camera and sit in a kind of a very difficult posture because the falls was coming. It all finished very comfortably and uh, the crew were very happy. After we came down, then one in the crew tells me that if at some point the falls, you know, the flow of the water becomes stronger than anything on that particular rock perched on that rock could be just washed off that was scary but when i watch the still when i watch the video shoot it's uh, mind blowing how i did that <laughs> A 
another shot was on a particular rock. So they put up a ladder and I had to go up to the rock and sit there with Tambura. And by the time I had got up to the rock, you know, the pleats had all become messed up and the pallu was crushed. You won't imagine this, what I'm telling you, you can't even believe this. They connected an iron box to that point and one of the crew was helping ironing out the pleat and uh, the pallu. These are things that don't happen by the day. I mean, what's special about this? Someone might think uh, that way too. But for me, these little things uh, are, like, are like little dots in my book of memoirs. And when you connect all the dots, you arrive at a beautiful image of a lovely column. I enjoyed doing it and uh, I benefited by it. Doing the ad for Potis did help in opening up a few doubts that I had. Uh, they gave me answers. They gave me confidence. They gave me the strength that if I wish to do something which I thought would be good for me, I should just go ahead and do it. It built that inbuilt confidence. It gave me happiness and joy because it was something that I loved. It was something that, that I loved that I promoted. The sari, the patta sari. And indirectly, it was a lead that I had taken from my guru. So I found that, you know, she was nodding her head positively towards what I was doing. And my family was very supportive of what I did. And I think it was a win-win situation. Grooming is extremely important for anyone in any profession, particularly in the art world, especially if you project yourself on stage and people are watching you. I know that uh, when I started to groom myself up, spruced up my grooming, I would use that word, and uh, you know, which was leaning towards elegance which was leaning towards a bit of opulence. There were some quirky comments, statements made. But then today, at the end of it all, I realize that I am a winner because every single artist today dresses up well, grooms themselves well, is conscious of what colors they wear, how they wear, what jewelry they match. These are facets that are apart from music, but yet I find that they have a pronounced link with music because the ambience that we create on stage adds value to our music, adds value to the entirety of beauty and presentation. And I'm sure if you did a survey with the audience, you would find that many appreciated the elegance that is produced or pronounced on stage. Thank you for listening to this conversation. See you all again at the next conversation session, which will deal with a different topic. <laughs>